Hello, Dr. Badijo here. Today we're going to go over how to use marker palettes. I'll give kind of an explanation of what they are and then also describe how we assign scale by using the measurements on the marker palette. So what you can see here in the center of the turntable is what I'm calling a marker palette. It's essentially just a little disc uh, made of paper or any sort of material you want to print it on. And it has these regular markers spaced out over the surface of it which allow for Agisoft MetaShape to actually register them automatically, putting a dot right in the centers, right? And it numbers them. So this would be dot marker number 42, marker number 48, and so forth, right? I have two of them. Um, they're intended for using uh, for turntable photogrammetry. So if you do like a top model, doing them in separate chunks where you have chunk one as the top and chunk two as the bottom, you can then merge the two without having conflicting marker numbers. So that's the reason for having two marker palettes available uh, for people that are working with turntable photogrammetry. So if you were looking for where to download these, you can go to my, uh, my lab's website here, or at least the page for it. Uh, this is GVALS, a Geospatial and Virtual Archaeology Lab and Studio. And you can kind of see the marker palettes there, a little explanation about them and the download files are right over here make sure you download these and you want to print them at 100 percent so and then i have kind of an example model right in here of um, an early hominid skull that we shot in with a marker palette so and if you're interested i've got other tutorials available here on the website as well so without any further delay let's go ahead and get into how to use these things so I'm going to close that out. This was a successful model that I had uh, while using two different marker palettes in chunk one, chunk two, that were later merged together using what's called a marker-based alignment. I have a video that shows how to do a marker-based alignment. If you're interested in it, just do a search or look under my YouTube channel or even on that website and you'll be able to access that video. But let's go ahead and just create a new chunk for this explanation. Um, I'll go ahead and Let's see, I'll add a chunk and then add some photos to it and go into my photos folder. I've said before in other videos, I always do this three folder structure where I save all my photos together. I save my actual project down in the output folder and then any sort of products that come out of that I put in the export folder here. So I know I can find here, let's see, top, all the photos of the top of this Alebrije. So if I now I have a chunk three there. All my photos are in. Looks like I have a hundred cameras. First thing I want to do is actually start out by registering each of those markers on these marker palettes. So that is to tell the computer to find the centers uh, to identify first and then find the centers of each one of these dots and assign a number to it. So I'm going to go to tools, markers and then detect markers. Okay. And you can play around a little bit with your tolerance here, uh, but if you're using this marker palette, you want to leave it in circular 12-bit. Um, some people have this range up to 40. Uh, 30 seems to work just fine for my, my purposes. So I'm going to leave all of that the same as you see it here in this dialog and hit OK. Now typically that process of detecting markers is actually pretty quick. You know, it usually takes less than a minute to do on a fairly fast computer. Uh, it's just going photo by photo and it's searching for all of those markers that it can automatically detect, right? And it's assigning numbers to them. So now that I actually have the photo open, I should be actually seeing these markers that were detected placed into the scene. Um, and since I don't see them, I want to go up here and double check to see if I have my flag checked off or not. And I want to toggle that down. And now you can actually see that it did successfully detect each of these markers. And if I went through every one of my photos, you're going to see what markers were detected in each of those photos. Now these markers are, or the marker palettes are actually pretty critical when you're working with some challenging objects that might be a bit more symmetrical because having these fixed points in the scene uh, already located before starting the alignment phase will actually help with the, the reconstruction. Um, and this way you don't have any sort of misalignments in the resulting and the results of the alignment phase. So let's go ahead and, and start the alignment here. I'm going to close that out. Obviously I'm not going to see anything here because the first step that I had was detecting markers. And go to workflow, hit align photos, I'll keep it on high. 
and I'll just keep these the same here. All right, it looks like there we have it. Um, successful alignment. Kind of back away, we can take a look just in general at the form and make sure that we have everything aligned the way it's supposed to. Uh, it seems to be okay to me. And I'm gonna turn the flag back on so we can actually see, and there they are. All of our targets with their numbers ready to go. All right, so the second part of this video is to show you how to actually assign scale to your model. Um, that's pretty easy. We, we just have to go into our reference pane here. Um, I'm working with Agisoft Metashape Professional, and you'll have to as well if you want to be able to assign scale to your model. So keep that in mind. This is for people who are using Agisoft Metashape Professional. So I'm going to click on Reference, and over here on the left-hand side, you'll see all the markers listed out, right? And they have their individual numbers. And what you want to do is, in the scene, locate two markers where you know it's going to be the, a set distance. Um, these marker palettes were designed to be 50 millimeters apart. Um, each of these points would be 50 millimeters apart. So between 35 and 41, and 41 and 47, we have known distances. So since we know the distances between, let's say, 35 and 41, we can select those over here in the targets uh, and turn them into a virtual scale bar. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll click 41. All right now, 41's highlighted. And then I'm going to go to 35, hold control down, and click it. So now they're both highlighted here, and you can see them highlighted here. And then I'll right click one of them, either or, and then create scale bar. I'll click that. So what I've now done is created a virtual scale bar. It's down here under scale bars. And then I have to assign a distance to that specific scale bar. Right now it's nothing. There's nothing there. But if you double click, it opens up an empty field where you can type in the actual distance. All right? So I know it's it's 50 millimeters, which is 5 centimeters. So I'm going to go 0 0.05. So we're working in meters. And I'll hit enter. Right? And I know that my accuracy level, I can change that to uh, 001 or 0001, right? Submillimeter accuracy. Uh, and then I can hit update, transform. Right, that's that little uh, recycle button up here. And away it goes. Right? Now this happens um, a lot of times when people are assigning scale the first time. Uh, it just disappears for some reason. Best way to get things back, um, sometimes you can go over here and just click on look through, right? And that brings it back to looking through that specific photo so you have your object in the center, right? So we now should, in theory, have scale. We can test that theory by zooming in and grabbing our little scale bar here, which now has popped up, our little ruler, excuse me. And this measurement tool can be used to go from here to here, roughly. And you'll see that it's 5 centimeters or 50 millimeters, right? So this says 4.99. Uh, of course, that was me just manually picking points. So if I were to get into the exact center of this to here, from here to here, you're going to find it to be exactly 50 millimeters. Right? Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. That's how you assign scale to your model. At this point, I would go ahead and run it all the way through to finish up this chunk and get back to my workflow uh, with top and bottom and later merging chunks to build a full-on spherical view model like the one that we see over here. All right, so that's really all I have for this video. Um, hopefully you guys will have a chance to download some marker palettes. Uh, give them a try. Don't forget to print them at 100%. Uh, and start the workflow by detecting markers and working from there. Um, yeah, thank you for watching.